Yo, I'm Brendan, can you pay your taxes with a credit card and get points for doing so? This could be huge if you've got thousands to pay in taxes. You might get a free trip out of the airline miles, or you could buy yourself a new gaming PC with a Best Buy gift card, all from just doing your civic duty, paying your taxes. Today, I did the research for you and found out it's possible, but there's also two big reasons why most people don't bother paying their taxes with a credit card. Thankfully, we also have an easy way around one of those problems, and it can make this work in our favor, and I'm planning to seriously look into this for paying my taxes next year. It may not work, but I'll tell you exactly why. First off, the long and the short answer is yes, you can absolutely pay your taxes with a credit card. The IRS website says you can pay online or over the phone. You can pay using a digital wallet like PayPal or click to pay, whatever that is. I never use that. If you've got a massive amount, like over a hundred grand, then there's other special requirements. So for most of us, we're not dealing with that much taxes. You've got to be making an insane amount of money or be like a big business to do that. But it is possible to do this. The way you do it is you go through one of these third party payment processing companies. Like here's three of them that they accept pay USA tax, pay 1040 and ACI payments. So you can see it's actually really cheap up here in this top section. If you only are paying by debit card, it's like a flat fee or this one in particular has a 1.87% fee. The bigger problem comes in whenever we pay with a credit card and that's where we get this percentage fee. It's really cool though that they accept so many different kinds of cards, whether that's a Visa card like these two, maybe it's a MasterCard like the Apple Titanium MasterCard is. Basically all the major forms of cards are accepted. You can make a payment right here on the website. Everything seems really easy about this process. So what are the risks and the downsides for paying your taxes on a credit card? Well, one big obvious risk is that if you take your tax bill and you slap that onto a credit card that might turn into a financial atomic bomb for you if you don't pay it off immediately. I don't need to have a $10,000 tax balance charged on a credit card that's costing me 24% interest per year. That's crazy town. I'm not doing that. One potential way around that, of course, is to say, well, I had the money to pay it off anyway, but if I put it on this credit card, maybe I'll get some reward money. And so it makes sense for me. Pay it off right away on that first month that it's due. There's two other ways around that requirement though. And I'll tell you about that in the next section where we talk about the rewards for doing this, the positives. Risk number two, whenever we're paying our taxes with a credit card is fees, not the credit card fees, these payment processor fees. This is what stops most people immediately whenever they consider doing this. You know, someone looks on the website, they find out it's possible. They go, oh yeah, I could totally do that. And then you come over here and say 1.8 to 2% fees. Well, I'm only getting maybe 1.5% cash back on my card. Even if you pay it off right away, it doesn't make sense. At least on face value, unless you hack the system, like I'm kind of planning on doing. Not literally hack the system, like break into the system. I mean, like use the tools that are available at hand to make the rewards worth it for you. But then risk number three is the one that could actually stop me from doing this altogether. Because the tricky thing is with this, e-file doesn't really work to your benefit because those same fees are way higher. See, these fees that I've shown you so far between 1.8 and 2% are if you're filing your taxes with paper physical forms. You know, you put everything together, you mail it into them, then you're allowed to make a payment by credit card this way. The crazy thing is that the IRS website says, look at these updated fees if you're paying by debit or credit when you e-file. So it's not even like, oh, the debit card is a cheaper way. It just sucks. If you're paying with a card and you're e-filing your taxes, you can almost forget about it. You can almost write off the option because now the fees are between 2.5 and 3% just to do this. Taxbandits.com makes out like a bandit with a 3% fee. The rest are basically 2.5%. So if you file your taxes physically with paper that gets mailed in, you've got a much smaller hurdle to jump. But for the rest of us who e-file, it's a lot trickier. So what are the rewards and what are the ways that we can maximize whenever it comes to putting our taxes on a credit card? Because there are still ways around this. They're just a little bit tricky. The hoops to jump through get smaller, right? Smaller hoops are harder. Maybe that's a secret comment word for today too, hoops. So one way around the risks and the hurdles and the problems with doing this is that you could sign up for a brand new 0% interest credit card. Some cards give you months or even a year of 0% interest, which effectively gives you longer to pay off your taxes. To me, this is still kind of flirting with fire. And so I don't love the idea of this, but technically it's an option. You know, you take your one big lump tax payment, maybe that you were planning on having to pay in February or March. And all of a sudden you span that out over six or 12 months. That can be a lot cheaper, a lot easier to swallow for you. But in my opinion, the next two options we have are better than this one. 0% credit card's fine, but getting bigger rewards than those fees, I think is the best way around it. There's two different ways that you can get monster fees that overwhelm these negative fees. You know, I want a, I want a reward bigger than the fee. First, we can use a card like the Robinhood Gold credit card, which has a 3% baseline rewards rate. Most other cards don't have a baseline rewards rate that high. It's between one and one and a half percent on kind of everything. They might have incentivized little sectors like dining or travel or whatever that are higher than that. But by and large, you're not going to find a credit card with a base rate that's this high. So on the face value of it, even that crazier higher two and a half percent fee for e-filing would be overwhelmed 
buy my 3% rewards on the Robinhood Gold credit card. The problem with that is tons of people are still on the wait list for this stupid thing and Robinhood isn't rushing to issue out this card to everyone. So it may not even be an option for you. So outside of netting somewhere between 0.5 and 1.18% on a transaction, depending on if I file electronically or with paper and the Robinhood credit card, how else can we earn rewards that overwhelm those nasty fees when it comes to paying for our tax with a credit card? Or other option is you can survive a less than 2% base rate on your credit card rewards as long as you can transform them into more. So there's plenty of credit card gurus out there and websites and things like that that show you the conversion from whatever your points are to our more valuable marketplace. The most common version of this that I'm aware of is with travel. So sometimes your points are worth double or triple their face value whenever you transfer them from Chase or City or whatever your kind of home credit card is to the airline themselves or to the travel network. So there's some examples here for you to see. I literally just Googled credit card transfer bonuses and websites like this come up that say, hey, if you're gonna get plane tickets for Aer Lingus anyway, you get a 30% bonus whenever you transfer points from Chase. Same thing with British Airways, same things with Iberia. And, and Marriott Bonvoy is even crazier, 50% bonus. But if you're looking to do this, if you're open to having those points used for travel and get a benefit, I would recommend having that transfer path lined up ahead of time so you can plan all that out and go, okay, we're gonna pay our taxes around this time. Let's look up which place we're gonna transfer our points to so we can get the maximized points for that. Like let's get our cheap airplane tickets or get our cheap hotel rooms or whatever that is. Have that all figured out before you do this so that you can nail this down and have a solid plan and make sure you're not missing out on this. I'll link some of these travel credit card transfer for websites in the description for you if you want to check them out later on. But I think that's a solid way to do this. The third way is probably one you've been like screaming at this whole time going, Brandon, duh, just use this kind of card. Of course it will work. It will always work if you do it this way. You're probably not wrong. I think this is probably the simplest math. And I mean, besides the Robinhood card that just has big enough rewards. Otherwise, this third way that you can benefit from doing this is probably the right way for most of us. And that way is to get a big fat sign up bonus. You get all those points in one fell swoop because you meet a minimum spend on a credit card. And so this way our positives immediately outweigh our negatives, right? We get this big fat lump of credit card points that not only covers the fees, it also covers kind of the risk of it being on the credit card. And the math is not that hard to do, but the baseline rule still stands that you need to have the cash on hand ready to pay this off anyway. Because if you take this balance on and you say, oh, I'll pay it off sometime, and you carry this balance for six or 12 months, well, it negates the value of this whole thing because you're probably getting charged 20 to 30% interest on your credit card. So this only works to do the sign up bonus method if you've got the cash. But assuming you do, let's do an example. This is a card that I currently have and use and enjoy, the Chase Sapphire Preferred card. So right now, if you sign up with the link that I've put in the description, yes, the referral link, but it's the same offer as you'd get anywhere. It's just that I benefit a little bit from it. You sign up and get approved, you get 60,000 bonus points after you spend $4,000 in the first three months. So if you sign up for this card and you pay your taxes in those first three months, that could be a big chunk of that four grand, maybe all of it. So with this card and many of them, your base rate that's not like a specialized category of spending is 1%. So right there, we're getting a 1% essentially like rebate back on what we're spending. So that's gonna recoup some of those fees for us. And if you meet the minimum spend requirement in those first three months, you get 60,000 bonus points on top of that. So if your taxes are, let's say like $4,000, you get 4,000 points as the base, plus 60,000 points as a lump on top of that for that initial spend bonus. So you have a total of 64,000 points with a base value of about $640 unless you're transferring it out to Marriott Bonvoy or you know some airline, it's worth about 640 bucks to you. So let's do a realistic thing and say you're gonna e-file, which means you're gonna incur a 2.5% fee for paying your $4,000 tax bill off using your credit card. 2.5% of four grand is a hundred bucks. So you're gonna pay an extra hundred dollars on your balance, but even factoring that in, you've got a positive $540 left over because the total value of your rewards was 640. Now you're down to 540. So by my math, that chase card totally works. It makes sense. Another option still works too, especially if you want to do travel with the Capital One Venture Rewards card. I just got this card in the last year and I've used it a bunch and I had a bunch of travel miles I could use, but you get two times bonus miles on everything that you buy, plus 75,000 bonus miles whenever you sign up and meet the minimum spend. It's the same offer as the previous chase. So you spend $4,000 in the first three months, you get 75,000 bonus miles, plus double points on that initial Initial spend, and so you're going to end up with what? What's my mental math here? 83,000 83, miles as an initial sign up, you know, lump of value for you. That's pretty awesome. You can book a lot of trips with that. You also don't necessarily need to have a ton of points if you look in the right spot for cheaper flights. And so a place like Point Hound, I made a video about that's really cool that maximizes how much your points are because they're essentially the best way to filter out different flights and travel options for you that cost as little points as possible. So especially if you're flexible on dates or locations, you just know you wanna travel, they will filter that down for you. I even have it set up to where they email me certain locations that I'm interested in, and it can be really cheap. Like I could fly from the continental US to Europe for 15,000 points. I mean, that's like, 
$150 flight if otherwise redeemed, that's that's nuts. Especially if you could somehow pair that with one of those transfer offers and get an extra like 30% value. I mean, you'd be flying across countries for a hundred bucks. That's nuts. I have no affiliation with them, but I'll link that in the description and I'll put that video at the end of this video too. And number four, the last kind of reward, the last piece of good news about using your credit card to pay off your taxes is that the credit card processing fees, those third party people deduct from you, that hundred dollar fee that we did in our little example is actually tax deductible for business expenses. So it doesn't negate the value of the fee just because of the tax deduction, but it effectively lowers the impact of that fee by whatever your effective tax rate is. So maybe it's only like a $80 fee now, something like that. That's pretty cool. If you were listening closely, you noticed that at one point I called the rewards from these cards something like a rebate. And if you wanna know more about how credit card rewards are taxed and how the IRS views those rewards, whether you will or won't get taxed on how your rewards are structured and how you take those rewards, then watch this video next. Or if you wanna watch a video all about the Robinhood Gold credit card, then watch this video next. And until next time, I'll see you guys later. Bye.